any visitor who's ever tried to cross the roads of Ahmedabad in northern India wouldn't be surprised to learn that with a population of 5 million, it's the largest and busiest city in Gujarat, the birthplace of Gandhi. Ahmedabad has been called the Manchester of the East because of its once booming textile industry, though oddly one seldom hears Manchester described as the Ahmedabad of the West. Like Manchester, it has a rich musical history. Stay tuned for the Gujarat Herman's Hermits later. When the celebrated sitar player Ravi Shankar performed with the Beatles in the 1960s, Indian classical music won instant worldwide recognition, but the traditions of classical music go back centuries. Northern India is the hotbed of the popular Hindustani music, while the South is the stronghold of Carnatic music. These two traditions are still performed and taught across India, but there has been concern for their survival since the explosion of Bollywood pop. To try to preserve and promote the old ways, an organisation called SATAC was founded in 1980. Initially, it was just a music school, but SATAC has now flourished into an annual festival, a 13-day event which aims to keep the traditions alive. Praful Anabai is the director of the SATAC Music School. During his time in the job, he's been encouraged by the increasing numbers of young students drawn to Indian classical styles. Saptak does not believe in an exam-oriented kind of curriculum and teaching. It is being passed on from a performing artist to students. All the faculty are performing artists themselves. And I find that these uh, audience, uh, young people who are coming, they're very keen very expectant and they want to see as to how the masters perform and what kind of dedication they have given to this art. One of India's top tabla players is Zakir Hussain. His presence at the Saptak Festival underlines the prestige of the event. He might be a professor at Princeton University, yet Zakir is keen to emphasise that being a classical musician is a continual learning process. Here, he performs with Hari Prasad Chaurasia, who plays the Bansuri, the North India bamboo flute. I guess it's important to be a student if you're going to be a teacher one of these days. And I always found, my teacher used to tell me that a teacher does not teach. A student inspires the knowledge out of the teacher. So I find that by t teaching, it has helped me to uh, analyze, break down, and in many ways understand the way I play much better than I would have if I would have just kept playing. This culture calls for spontaneous creativity. It calls for improvisation. And that's not something you just open a piece of paper and say, okay, I'm going to, that's not it. So you have to be able to become the music and become the vehicle of this music. It has to become a second nature to you. So you can just be able to alter anything. It's your living room. find this strange if I tell you that Indian classical music as a stage art form, as a performance art form, is only about 70 odd years old. Even though we say its music is 20, 2,000 years, 3,000 years old, it stayed in the temples, it stayed in the palaces. And since independence of India, uh, the musicians had to fend for themselves because the principalities were gone, everything was gone. So they found a way to be able to 
bring the art form onto the stage. So it was people like Pandit Ravi Shankar and so on who kind of perfected the art of how to present Indian classical music. And that's what's happening with Indian musicians now. They are also able to get out and perform with various artists of other traditions and roots, whether be it jazz or African or Chinese or whatever. And so it is great to see that India is opening up. I think yesterday was really nice when Zakir Hussain was playing because it was so packed and the audience was so uh, into it and clapping and wah and ah. So you had all these murmurs coming from all around you and people counting and people being excited to look. So I think yesterday was very special. It would have to be. Gujarat being a dry state, not many Western visitors would be able to cope with the 13 day event without the customary music festival refreshments. At just 27, Shashank Subramaniam is one of the younger stars of Indian classical music. He's a flautist from Chennai in southern India. His first instrument was the violin, but he moved on from that and onto the flute at the ripe old age of six. Given the importance of improvisation in traditional Indian music, it's no surprise that Shashank is a jazz fan. Carnotic music uh, has two parts, two distinct parts. One is composition which has a lot of lyrics and the other part is improvisation. In fact I should say more than 80 percent of the music is improvised on the spot. And another um, main factor in canonic music is the emphasis on rhythm and rhythmic patterns in music. But the flute, especially to me, can reproduce the vocal form of music extremely well. Um, since in Indian music, or especially the South Indian music, it is mainly the reproduction of a human voice. The more closer you are to the human voice, the better you are as an artist. It is possible that we can produce um, two octaves, one after the other, pretty quickly and simultaneously as well. And simultaneously. 